All right, guys, it is me here, and I'm back once again with another video, and today I'm going to be doing something quite different to what I would normally do, considering normally I don't actually upload, so I guess any video is different, but as a general, you know, prospect on my entire channel, this is going to be quite different to what I would normally do. I have done a video along the same line kind of before, as this is something kind of to do with more my academic life and my life in college. If you didn't know, I actually studied game design in college, so this video is actually going to be something I have to do for my course. And what this is going to be, guys, is a little five or six minute documentary of sorts, or a mockumentary, if you will, of my take on the issues and solutions for said issues with regards to ethics in video games. Um, so this is obviously a fairly important topic with regards to all aspects of video games, be that, you know, censorship, marketing, or even just the creation of the games. This is actually quite a very important issue to a lot of people in a lot of various different parts of the industry. But without further ado, guys, I'm going to get straight onto the video. If you do enjoy this, or <laughs> considering this isn't something I would normally do, make sure you drop a like on the video, or maybe drop a comment, or even a subscribe if you do feel up to it. But anyway, guys, let's get straight onto the video. So guys, to start with this, I am going to throw out a couple of definitions for you guys with regards to what I'm actually talking about because I feel that sometimes, especially on the internet, people can lose the run of themselves and information can get lost in translation and I think the point can really be missed when someone's actually discussing a quite important topic and this being ethics in video games is an extremely important topic to a lot of different people in a lot of different parts of the video games industry and I think it is something that is very hotly discussed and is very you know important to everyone in the gaming industry be they the players, the creators, the marketers, advertisers or the people who rate the games you know it's 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 an extremely important thing that can effectively make or break a game can change entirely the demographic of how or who plays the game so these definitions are going to be first of all the definition for ethics which is designated as the moral principles that govern a person's behavior or the conducting of an activity or the second part of that is a branch of knowledge that deals with moral principles second of all the definition that I'm gonna throw out for you guys is the definition of morality or morals themselves. Morality is described as the principles concerning the, the distinction between right and wrong or good and bad behavior, or a particular system of values and principles of conduct with or the extent to which an action is right or wrong. Now that last one is very, very important because especially in games where you have aspects of meaningful choice and uh, systems of like life and death and real feeling for characters, they basically are the, the, the foundation for games. It always comes down to that. Obviously there are certain situations where that doesn't apply, but in a lot of cases, if you break games down to their bare bones, it comes down to good, and, bad. and thirdly guys, the definition that I have for you is the definition of a video game or a computer game. Just to make this really clear, video game is described as a game played by electronically manipulating images produced by a computer program or a monitor or other display. So for all of you out there, this is not actually real life. This is a simulation. This is a visual image. This is something you see, not an actual material object. Just, j just, just for people who are like, you know, yeah. So what I'm going to talk about first of all is how do video games affect people's ethics or morality. Uh, in this section what I want to talk about initially is the game Bully or Canis Cane Medit if you're from Ireland or UK or I think half of Europe. Not really too sure which territories got what but here of course it was Canis Cane Medit. This game depicted fairly intense violence, bullying and you know, fairly, I guess, skewed moral principles in an underage school setting, obviously in a fictional school, in a fictional part of England. However, it, because it was depicted in an underage setting where people were still in school, where you could bully kids, where you could beat up other kids and bully them, you could steal things, you could gamble, uh, you could like set traps, you could injure people, like these were all ethical and moral issues that people felt that if these things were recreated in an actual school setting with underage children where people could get hurt, that that this is that it could potentially be a problem the game could be cited as the source and that's why people decided that it should be rated as a, like a higher age rating game but the problem was that parents felt that if this were to be recreated in a real life setting it could be actually quite dangerous and you know morally unsound and ethically unsound and they felt that that could genuinely genuinely be a problem Second of all, what I want to talk about is GTA. Now, GTA has been at the forefront of ethics issues since the 1990s where it came out because GTA, you know, obviously it does portray to a certain extent fairly senseless violence, you know, things like murder, stealing, uh, misogyny, um, 
and you know the the it kind of almost promotes and glorifies and glamorizes crime in itself of any kind but the problem is that it does that so openly obviously it is an 18 plus rated game so you, you obviously you have to be an adult to buy it but kids kids obviously do have this game and i guess the problem that a, lot, that a lot of people have is that kids could potentially emulate the actions in these games obviously it, it has come to you know the media's attention before it's like oh kid steals mother's car drives five miles with his friend blames gta for that but obviously you can't genuinely prove if gta did or not but that's why it is an ethical issue that people don't uh, the line is fairly gray and fairly blurred whether you know these games do genuinely affect people's ethics and people's mor moral compasses in such a way that it would force them to do something and i guess I, I can't see where they're coming from with that considering like if something is okay in a game someone someone not so mentally sound could believe you know obviously if it's okay in a game it could be okay in real life and i think that can be a problem and third of all what i want to talk about in this section is the asp aspect of horror and gore in video games now obviously the most famous case of this is the manhunt games manhunt one manhunt one and manhunt two which were literally banned all over the world on their release due to seriously excessive violence and gore and um, they were like the executions in this game were so 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 bloody and so so gory that they were literally banned all over the entire world from you know every single country including ireland you know so obviously those bans have been lifted now but that amount of violence and that amount of blood obviously even to me would be quite ethically questionable considering if these things were to be emulated again in real life as i've said before they would be a serious serious crime and a serious nightmare for legal systems and judges everywhere obviously not to mention a pr marketing nightmare for the games companies and potentially a lawsuit you know they could ruin ruin games companies if it was traced back that these were the root of these problems now i guess in the second point i want to make on this first i talked about how do video games affect people's ethics now i want to talk about how people's ethics affect video games now this is kind of something i wanted to flip over onto the other side because previously obviously most of what was discussed is fairly negative connotations of all the things happening in games all these negative things but people forget that People's negative views of ethics and morality can affect video games, obviously for the better and for the worse in a lot of cases. So I'm just going to go over some of those things. First, what I want to talk about is the issue of censorship. Now, obviously video games are recognized as an art form. There are games that have won Grammys, games that have won, you know, short film awards for their cutscenes and stuff. But... A lot, a lot of, a lot of video games can be quite misunderstood, especially by uh, ratings agencies. Now, most games are rated, you know, by the ESRB, uh, Peggy, and the BBFC. In Ireland, here for for many years, they were rated by the IFCO and the IFB. Now, these these companies rated movies. They rated they rated actual film. And when it came to video games, they were quite lax. Sometimes they were quite lax, and sometimes sometimes they were you know quite strict. So uh, things kind of could be could be lost in translation. Over recent years, one of the most prevalent ones banned in Ireland, and one, I think one of the only ones was obviously the Manhunt series, which I previously talked about, which was incredibly gory and incredibly bloody and violent. Which I can totally understand being banned. It is available now, obviously but I can understand why it was banned before. Ireland's a very conservative country, and, you know, it's it's probably one of the most disgusting games I've ever personally played. And obviously, it was a lot of fun, but the butchering in that game is, is just god-awful. With regards, then, obviously, to censorship, the US and Australia have quite strict censorship laws. US less than others, but Australia is known for having some of the worst censorship laws with regards to video games ever. Um, everything gets banned in Australia when it releases, and everything has to be scaled down. Uh, you can't have blood, you can't have gore, all these kind of things. Well, obviously, to a certain extent, you can't have some, but... A lot of games are given really high age ratings when they come out in Australia and they have to be censored and scaled down uh, to be available to the general public in Australia because of how strict their censorship laws are with regards to uh, age ratings in games. And this can obviously be quite difficult for game companies sometimes and it can make it kind of kind of a nightmare sometimes for for companies bringing out games in australia because you never know how they're going to be rated when they come out obviously you can't have a guess but it's it's always kind of up in the air just with regards to how things are censored and banned in other countries like pretty much everywhere in the world manhunt was banned obviously for for like serious reasons like it was disgusting but uh, other games like rape play and stuff uh, that's literally been banned everywhere in the world because it does glorify underage rape and stuff and that is obviously extremely grim and i totally understand why that was banned but you know games like that can be banned for for, for having very serious things in them that might be okay in some countries and obviously are totally not in others games like modern warfare 2 and counter-strike uh, i think go source and 1.6 were all banned in brazil for having maps based around favelas um 
Now this is obviously quite important, they didn't want their image being kind of marred by the game, so they were banned in those countries, obviously Manhunt banned in Ireland, Singapore banned Half-Life and Mass Effect, Half-Life was banned because of, um, I think it was unlicensed music or something, and Mass Effect was banned in Singapore, it's banned in China, it's banned in Russia, it's banned in Korea, everywhere, because it shows a homosexual scene between a female alien and a female human. Now obviously, that mightn't be, portray it mightn't be accepted uh, in these countries, but all everywhere else in the world, things like gay marriage and stuff are being legalized everywhere, and it's great for the world, it's, it's showing acceptance, but in these countries it's not, which means games like this get banned, and then obviously, you know, the last one I want to talk about is Homefront being banned in South and North, North Korea, obviously, but South Korea to stop tensions with North Korea because of the, the depiction of North Korea in Homefront. Now in Homefront, you have North Korea invading the US, which kind of did cause, you know, it could potentially cause tensions with South Korea if they had a game there that, you know, obviously did demonize North Korea. Uh, next, I want to talk about, obviously, lawsuits. Going to go very briefly into this. Now, GTA has been, you know, destroyed by lawsuits over the years. They've won nearly most of them, nearly, nearly all of them, pretty much. Uh, Rockstar North have been absolutely plagued with uh, uh, legal cases and lawsuits from everyone, from consumers, parents, uh, schools and teachers. They've been plagued by uh, voice actors, animators, everything. Anybody who has anything to do with the game wants some of the revenue for something that's gone wrong and they've blamed GTA for it. People like uh, Shag from Cypress Hill and stuff, like they've all sued them. And I guess like people's ethics with regards to how they're portrayed and how, how, like, how the ethics affects them can kind of have a, a skewed reality, a skewed vision of what what they think they should get out of the game, or what ethics should get them out of the game. You know, like it's it's it's, it's a little bit skewed, and then that kind, of, that kind of does bring it back down to censorship again. Censorship can be an ethical issue, but more than anything, it is a legal issue. Uh, ethics kind of does just does play an adjoining part. Um, another part to do with the censorship and ethics in general is companies are finding new ways to get around ethics issues, such as you know blood and gore. Um, misogyny, stuff like that. Uh, things like, you know, uh, confetti coming out of headshots in Halo 3, uh, dollars instead of blood for kills in Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3, and uh, most recently, you know, uh, Call of Duty War World War 2 is uh, not going to be displaying the war is not going to be displaying the Nazi flag with the swastika in online play, whereas it's going to have it in the campaign and zombies in the campaign modes and the single player modes in the countries that that is allowed. Obviously in places like Russia, Germany, stuff like that, you're not allowed to have those flags on display, so they're not gonna be available in those countries or in online play, but in single player in other countries, such as you know UK, Ireland, uh, and parts of Europe, you are gonna be able to display those, so it's gonna be quite different there. Um, yeah, so I guess it's companies finding a way to get over an, like an ethical kind of um, bump in the road. I guess, with regards to how people feel about a certain part of the game. It's usually something to do with violence or gore, and it can be it can be kind of, you know, done around, and there always is a way within the game, like the, the famous Mortal Kombat, you know, um, button combination that does bring back, you know, it takes the gore, like gore taken out of the game, and it puts puts the gore back in. There's always, a, like, a selection in any of the Call of Duty games and stuff to put back in the gore. You can turn it on and off, uh, which does kind of get around that kind of ethical kind of gray area. Uh, that some people do find quite tedious and can be, you know, quite sensitive for some people. So I guess it is an ethical issue, but it can be, you know, there can be a kind of um, push and pull with it, and it can it can be gone around. And then lastly, with regards to ethics, I just want to talk about meaningful choice in games and the difference between good and bad, right and wrong, and then you know, good and evil. You know, it's 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 fairly a, a hotly debated topic in video games, like what what is defined as right and wrong, what makes something right and wrong in a game, and obviously that, that is someone's moral compass, but a lot of the times in games you have to think about like what is that player's moral compass, what is the character's moral compass, what what is, what, what makes the game, what makes the decision in that game good or bad with regards to the setting of that game. Obviously, you know, like different games are always going to have different ones, like uh, some notable games that do have like and meaningful choice options, you know, you have like The Witcher, um, Detroit, which is a new game coming out, 
you have Heavy Rain and then most notably Mass Effect, uh, which do have these choice options that can dictate the ending of the game and how things progress within the game. But it is it is kind of like, um, it is a choice the player has to make at the end of the day. It is, it is an ethical issue a lot of the time. It can, it can decide whether, you know, someone is going to live or die, whether someone is going to escape or be detained. You know, it's, it's, it's always something to do with a right or a wrong. And this is, above all else, an ethical issue for anybody. Um, but it, I guess in the end, it does come down to the player. It is the developers and the programmers that decide on the choice and the storyboard, everyone, they decide on the choice, but it's the player that decides which part of that choice to make. And it is then their ethical choice and their ethical issue to dictate what happens in that you know particular circumstance. But um, anyway, guys, that is pretty much it. I know it's quite long. This video is supposed to be five minutes and it is... I, I guess going to be like 17 minutes, so it's it's quite long, but um, there was a lot I wanted to say, and there is still more I want to say, but I know I have to kind of keep this kind of concise. I do I do tend to ramble quite a lot. Um, I think I'm actually doing it now, but um, yeah, guys, I guess that's pretty much it. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you drop a like or a comment or a subscribe. Um, if you do feel that this video was informative or, you know, that you enjoyed any of the content in it, but with that being said... I hope you guys did learn something from, from this, from my ramblings about ethics, about ethics. Um, and yeah, I've been Hitman, guys. I will see you in the next one. Hitman, out.